Alright, thanks for watching. So in the previous video, I did a video on the baby Chevy Schultz inequality and you may wonder what is the Papa Chevy Schultz inequality. Well, some of you might know it, but in case you don't, this video is for you. So, in this video, I assume that f is greater or equal to zero. f is greater or equal to zero. But in general, you can do this just by replacing f with absolute value of f. Just to let you know. Okay, so what does... Well, there are actually two versions of the Papa's Chebyshev's inequality. Uh, let me first do the baby Papa version, so the little, the uncle version maybe, and it's called Markov's inequality. Inequality. It tells you the following. Suppose you want to know you have a function and a value t, and you want to know how long or no, uh, how often f is greater or equal to t. So suppose you have this function here, like this is f, again might blow up to infinity, completely fine, and given a value t, you want to know how big is the set where f is greater or equal to t. So in this picture, the set is the following. This one here, greater or equal to t, because in that set, f is actually bigger than t, and we want to know how big is this. How big is that set? And in general, if f is integrable, this set is not very big. As you can see in this picture, this set is kind of tiny compared to the rest. And more precisely, Markov's inequality tells you exactly how big it is. Namely, if the integral of f exists, so the, I guess the integral of f from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx, if this is finite, then this set is less than or equal to that constant over t. So if you'd like, it's just a constant over t. So, in particular, the larger you let t, this decays like 1 over x, if you want. And it's nice, it gives you some estimate about, you know, how quickly this, this case decays to zero. And it tells you also how big a function can really be if it's integrable. So, uh, I'm saying, for example, it cannot be like c over t squared, because that's much bigger, so. Okay, and let me show this, and it's a very nice proof in my opinion. Namely, consider the integral of f. So here's the proof. Integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x dx. And by the way, this you'll see in a second, this easily generalizes to, you know, sets of higher dimension. And, you know, in fact, here, I'm not using any Riemann integral. It actually works with Lebesgue integral as well. So it's a very you know, general proof. Okay, now let's look at the real line. Okay, let's say here. You can really decompose it into two regions. You can decompose it in the region where f is greater or equal to t and the other region where f is less than t. So, again, just by decomposing the two regions, this equals to the integral of f, f of x dx, where f is greater or equal to t, plus the integral of f is less than t of f of x dx. This is sort of like the analog of saying the integral from a to b is the integral from a to c, to the integral of c to b. All right, and remember, we're only really caring about this region, but the nice thing is, remember that f is greater or equal to zero. So this is greater or equal to zero. So whatever this junk is, even if 
this has set size zero or infinity, this is uh, greater or equal to zero. So in the end, this is greater or equal to the set where f is greater or equal to t of f of x dx. All right, and here's the cool thing. If f is greater or equal to t, then this thing, well, on this region, f is greater or equal to t. So this becomes, in fact, greater or equal to t, the integral of the constant t over this region. Okay. And now, this is constant with respect to x, so you can pull it out, and you're left with t times the integral of 1 over that set. t times the integral of 1 over the set f is greater or equal to t. But, remember the integral of 1 over any set, think of this as you know, your set A and you have your function 1, well, the integral of 1 over that set is just the size of that set. So t times f is greater or equal to t, the measure of it. And so, if you go back in this inequality, we find that t times the size of f is greater or equal to t is less than or equal, again, going back less, 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 equal, equal to the integral minus infinity of infinity of f of x dx. And then, if you just divide both sides by t, which is positive, you find, indeed, that the set where f is greater or equal to 0 is bounded by the integral of f over t. So, this is very nice. And, in fact, the Chebyshev's inequality tells you something almost identical, and the proof is also almost identical. So now let me state and prove the Papa, like the old Papa Chebyshev's inequality. Chebyshev's inequality. Namely, again, Look at the size where f is greater or equal to t. But now, suppose that not only the integral of f exists, but the integral of f of x squared exists. So imagine f is even better than integrable. So suppose not only the integral of f exists, but the square of the integral of f exists then we actually get an even better uh, decay. Namely, this set decays not only like 1 over t, but it decays like 1 over t squared. You see, if t is very large, this is even better. In other words, if a function is more than integrable, if it's square integrable, it's infinity even less often. So, in some sense, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it uh, how can I say, it? Um, yeah, uh, it decays like slower to infinity than does a regular in integrable function. And by the way, there's nothing special about the factor two. You'll see, you can replace this by any p. So if you find that f is an LP, then this set decays like t to the p. So if it's an L3, if it's thrice integrable, you know, sorry, if it's cube is integrable, then it decays like 1 over t cubed. And again, proof, and you'll see it's basically identical. If you take the integral of f squared, this thing, well, Again, you can decompose it in the set where f is greater or equal to t of f squared plus the set 
where f is less than or equal to t of f squared. Sorry, less than. Now, again, whatever this is, this function is positive, so this is greater or equal to zero. So this thing is greater or equal to the integral over the set where f is greater or equal to t of f of x squared dx. But again, if f is greater or equal to t, well, this becomes the set where f is greater or equal to t of, this is greater than t squared dx. But now, t squared is a constant, so this comes out f is greater or equal to t of 1 dx, and that becomes t squared times the size of the set where f is greater or equal to t. And therefore, putting everything together, we find that the size of the set, I guess t squared times the size of the set where f is greater than or equal to t becomes less than or equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x squared dx. And then just divide by t squared on both sides, and you get indeed Papa Chebyshev's inequality. So I think it's very nice, not only in probability, but it also gives you sort of an estimate of you know, how quickly functions, uh, you know, in L1 or L2 decay to infinity. So if it goes to infinity very fast, and if it, the size here is like 1 over t, then, for example, it cannot really be in L2. It's very neat. And ana analysts care about this a lot. All right, so if you like this analysis proof and you want to see more analysis, or if you like math in general, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.